Hello everyone and welcome to an ebook review for People We Keep. So this was written by Allison Larkin and the ebook is 368 pages. It's actually a little less than that when you take into account acknowledgments, notes from the author, things like that. This was published in 2021 and is a standalone. So this one we are following um, a gal by the name of April. This takes place in the 90s and I loved that. So there were a lot of 90s references uh, that I was able to pick up on that was thoroughly enjoyable to read about. So we're following April. She plays the guitar and she's really struggling with succeeding in school and uh, she goes to these places where she is able to play her guitar for people and hopefully get a little bit of income from doing so. So in order to get to places, she ends up, she actually commits auto theft, steals a car from her neighbor and things like that. So we're following, she is in a relationship. Uh, the guy wants to get married, have kids and all of that. She's a little bit more like, oh, I don't really want to do that right now. I don't think I'm ready and things like that. So we're following her as she basically, she's in a single parent home, but her dad is never around. Her mom left when she was very little. So you have child abandonment. So the parent just leaves. The dad is not around. So he's, so think neglect and she's just trying to live in this little trailer on her own um, and things like that. You also have a uh, high school dropout as a content on this. There is sex. It does not get explicit. It leads up to it and then more after. You might see a little bit of touching, but that's kind of it. Um, this does have LGBT rep. You have someone that is lesbian and you do have someone that is gay in this. There is, uh, this does at some points allude to incest. So do be aware of that. And it does get a little bit more descriptive as well as uh, physical abuse. You also have gambling addiction. And so it does go into that. This is a standalone again. And the audiobook is narrated by Julia Whelan and is 11 hours and eight minutes on one time speed. So we're just following April. She ends up running away from home, which happens right at the start of the book. And a car is stolen and she tries to do everything that she can to make it so that people think she is older than she actually is. Um, like instead of being 15 or 16, she wants them to think she's 18 or 19 type of a situation. Um, you have, so her trying to do what she can uh, in including, you know, the lies, fake ID, stealing the car, um, trying to get along in life without having to ask for help and assistance from people, but wishing that people would offer and so that she can either take them up or not, but she doesn't want to ask for help. And so you're just following as she goes through life and yeah, you have breaking and entering as a content in this as well. And she takes this guitar with her everywhere she can. Um, you have items that get stolen, so you do have theft. And she just plays this guitar on the beach, wherever she can, where she can have people put money in her case, or again, at other places where the owner of the establishment will pay her a certain amount of money to play for the night. So yeah, you're just following as she does that, um, enters into some relationships and kind of comes full circle with the end. And that's pretty much all I can say about that. Uh, very much a coming of age type of a story, uh, literary fiction, I would say. Let's see, I have this pulled up on Goodreads. It says it's a historical fiction because it does take place in the 90s. Coming of age, yes. Uh, this does have the tag of young adult. I think the only reason that tag is there really is because of the age of the main character. Although a young adult could read this, I could see that going that way. Um, music is a big thing in this. A lot of talk of guitars um, and adult. I think the content is more adult as far as the hard-hitting topics 
what the character has to deal with, but I do think the maturity of the young adult um, can impact whether or not this is something that they would understand and enjoy. I think a lot of young adults would, but especially on the older age of the young adult spectrum. So yeah, she's, we're just following her as she grows up into adulthood and enters some relationships, makes some friends, and the lies that she's told, and how she has learned at a young age to, when she starts to get into certain situations and lies being found out, that she basically just drops everything and runs. So a lot of not facing the consequences and just trying to run away. So a lot of that. So there's a lot of great conversations in this, and I about cried at the end. <laughs> So this can be hard hitting. Um, yeah. So, okay. So I've given you the content warnings and the brief synopsis of what this is about. All right, let's get, just in case you are still on the fence, let's get into the word usage. Okay, so we have the word damn comes up 10 times. Fuck 21. Ass 11, shit 22, rape comes up one time, uh, uh, and if I believe, if I remember right, rape is just kind of glossed over, but it does not get, get descriptive. Uh, the word hell comes up eight. The name God, 17, sometimes in a religious sense of whether you believe or not. Uh, the word, uh, the phrase damn it comes up once. The name Jesus, twice. Badass, once. Motherfucker, twice. Bitch, seven. Hard, two. Boobs, two. And there are sexual references and innuendos as far as some of this terminology goes. So do be aware of that. Uh, the word dyke comes up once. And I do remember hearing this a lot in the 90s. And it was a derogatory word for someone who is lesbian. So do be aware of that. So you do have some homophobia talk in this. Uh, mostly from the perspective of how someone is, they're, like their family doesn't understand and might be homophobic towards them. Uh, the term asshole comes up once. Nipple, four times. Man whore, two. Uh, whoritude, once. <laughs> uh, bullshit, twice. Hellhole, once. The term goddamn, twice. Horny, once. Breasts, once. Whore twice and the name Lord once. So yeah, those are it. I personally do recommend this book to a lot of people if you don't mind the language on this because there are a lot of good things to discuss. So especially if you are wanting to buddy read this and have, I think you can have a lot of great discussions. Um, or same thing with like a book club. I think this would be a great book club book. So yes, let me know. Have you read People We Keep? by Alison Larkin. Uh, have you not? Have you read any of Alison Larkin's other work? She has uh, Stay, Why Can't I Believe You, Swimming for Sunlight. There's also one called Home of the American Circus. I'm not sure about that. So there's a few other works that have her name attached to it. But yeah, let me know. Have you read anything else by Alison Larkin? Have you read People We Keep? Are you interested in this? Were you on the fence? And with knowing the content that is now in this book, are you swayed to either avoid it or to go ahead and pick it up? Let me know. Talk to me in the comment section below. And until next time, stay true to yourself and enjoy a good book. And I'll talk to you later.